morning, good morning, the world, good morning, Africa, good morning, Uganda. Welcome to SNC Quarantine. My name is Brian. Just so you know, I'm not alone. Maybe we're about five people here. Obugalo, from my five people, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Yes. Your Monday will never be the same again because of this. Every Monday at 11 o'clock, we uh, shall be coming to you on the Standing Bank Facebook page. So what you're going to do, before we even start, start a watch party. Invite your friends. Share the link on Instagram, Facebook, uh, where, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. Because we are going to be talking some real deep stuff if you are in the business of writing business plans you're going to get some education today if you want to write a business plan if you are interested in getting a loan but don't know how to go about it we have everything here and to all my friends who are probably in uh, uh, vacation you're waiting to go to the next level uh, or you're thinking during this quarantine what can I start some of you have reinvented your businesses we have someone who has started a mega Rolex project but it also has a business plan isn't that amazing CB Adjusti CB Adjusti I wake up and I said let me start a Rolex you know this thing is well thought uh, about and joining me today from my far right, the man, <laughs> I like the flower. I, I, I didn't get the memo. I should have gotten it today. I should have brought it. If I, I told you some of you who want to get, uh, you know, loans at the bank and you don't know how to go about it, you just come to the bank and say, no, 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 no. This gentleman is in charge of that to make sure that you are uh, able to get the loan. Mr. Kiremire Mujenyi. Your senior manager, credit at Standing Bank. So we've been having some of these questions on our Facebook our feed uh, for the past couple of weeks, and today he's going to be able to answer some of those questions. Also, an SN an SNC alumni from Chibuli, Joseph Odoi. <laughs> Don't see him there smiling, smiling gently. The man is in the business of Rolex. Yes. And of course, a friend of the uh, championship, a friend of the bank, uh, Mr. Dennis Lindo. <laughs> Dennis Lindo is a business coach, and today he's going to talk to us about the five W's and H of business planning. Not W, yeah? <laughs> Not W. <laughs> of course, we wouldn't do this without our partners who have made sure that they work with us even through this quarantine. NBS always, thank you very much. Uh -huh. The process is audited by our friends at PWC. We are drinking and staying rehydrated. You know, we are told that uh, this corona thing, you must uh, have uh, eh? enough water. Our friends at Vero Water are making sure that we stay hydrated. Of course, you have seen the internet is not buffering, right? Rock Telecom is making sure that we are uh, set. Uh, MTN, who are giving you GB and airtime for all those questions that you're answering uh, online. Our friends at Coca-Cola are also uh, making sure we stay refreshed. IUEA, our partners. You see your partners who make sure that uh, our, some of our people get you know, enough uh, scholarships for this. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, the food. Who would, ha, but this guy is much mm. Javas, Cafe Javas. Whoa. And the Food Hub, now they have introduced a contactless menu. Mm. When you get to Cafe Javas or the Food Hub, you just, you know, swipe the barcode and the menu appears on your phone. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, you know, uh, buy your chicken. This is a picture. No, 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 no. It's, it's right in your phone, all right? And this wouldn't be possible without the amazing leadership at Stanbic Bank. To my far right, far right, as in far right, the Iron Lady. <laughs> I like that you're wearing our, you know, our colors, green, uh, this year because we are going green, right? Our friends of Roofings have given us all the trees. Barbara Kasekende. Yes. 
and our implementing partners, the Investors Club, Martin Muhwezi. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, at Stanbic, we believe that it can be. I can't hear you. It can be. So no matter the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, for us here, we believe that it can be. When we come back, Dennis Lindo on the five W's and H of business planning. Stay with us. The future of banking is here. You can now open your account online. No downloads, no apps needed, no paperwork. On any device, laptop, PC in office, phone at home, iPad on the move, on one page, anytime, anywhere. All you need are three simple things. A picture of valid national ID or passport for non-nationals. A selfie plus a picture of your signature on the device you're using. Now, let's get started. Scan the QR code on any of our adverts or visit the website www.standbake.co.ug and click on this button or this button. Click the key facts document and get to know our rates and charges for different accounts. Read terms and conditions. Click open an account. Complete the form with your details and attach a selfie or passport photo, signature photo, and national ID photo. Wait for scan to complete, then click submit. You will receive a reference number by email and SMS. If the account application is successful, we will send a confirmation email and an SMS. In the case that your submission has an issue, you will receive a call to advise you on the next steps. You can amend the same application and there's no need to start afresh. Now that you've opened an account online, simply present your national ID and reference number to collect your Visa card and enable cash withdrawals. Register on online banking and then on mobile, star 290 hash. View the next video on how. For more details, call our customer center on 0800-250-250 or visit our website www.standbigbank.co.ug or Email us at cccug at standbic.com. Standbic Bank is regulated by the Bank of Uganda. to get signed up to online banking now that you've got your account let's get you hooked up on online banking visit www.standbigbank.co.ug and click online banking on the right top corner of the screen contact us on social media or call our toll-free customer care line to receive your unique username after receiving your username enter it in the account name slot enter the one-time password OTP that was delivered via SMS to your mobile phone Select three security questions and an answer you can remember. Now, you can begin your banking with no hassle. Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, this is SNC Quarantine. Ordinarily, we would have been uh, coming from a boot camp uh, at Gaza High School with all these number of schools and uh, making sure that uh, uh, we, we are getting the, the, the students ready, write their business plan, that we have the finalists. But because of the coronavirus, of course, we have been unable to have that as initially planned. Nevertheless, we cannot be preaching what we are not doing, okay? So what we started doing is have these sessions on Facebook, and we're going to go on until uh, the quarantine ends, actually. So join us on the, uh, the Sandvik uh, Bank Facebook page. Share the link. We're also live on Twitter uh, through Periscope. You can uh, follow the conversation there and ask questions as we go on. I'll be able to put them to uh, some of uh, the panelists here. But first, the five W's and H of business planning. Dennis, take it away. Yes, uh, thank you, Brad.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything that you've been doing for this particular program. And um, our listeners, our learners, wherever you are, a very great good morning. My name is Dennis Lindo, as Ebly um, introduced. And um, as part of this very campaign to make sure that um, we can start an entrepreneurial culture in this country, uh, Stan Big Bank has been made it possible for us to be able to reach you whichever way it is. Come what may, come rain, come sunshine, come COVID, yes, we shall be able to get to you. And we have quite a number of uh, experiences that we have been able to note from the previous uh, campaigns that we had in the previous years. And tonight, we are looking at how we can be able to reach you in your comfort, in the comfort of your own homes, to make sure that this process goes on. Whether we are in COVID or in lockdown, our learning, our eating, our consumption, our earning must continue. But above everything else, we must stay healthy. We thank our sponsors for everything that they've done for this to happen. Today, we want to look at the whole aspect of business. But also, in light of that, we want to look at also the aspect of business from the perspective of planning for this business. Because when we want to do business, it's a feeling, it's a desire, it is a passion somewhere. And you want to do it, so you wake up. Maybe some of us have dreams. We come out of our dreams and we want to do something. But we've learned out of research that anything you do without a plan, you're only planning to fail. And if you plan to fail, then that means you had better not even started to do anything. And unfortunately for business, numbers don't lie. The numbers will be able to show whether you're doing right or you're doing wrong. And therefore, the planning becomes of an essence. No wonder we have the essence program, as we're talking about this time. But friends out there, as you get ready, I think you need to have a pen and paper because anything that is going to be shared on this platform is of great importance for you. Any business that you see, probably I could start by saying that any idea that you could see in the community, could be a building, could be a stall, could be a truck, could be you know, a grocery somewhere, is a plan somebody thought about from an idea. That idea comes and then somebody says, I'm going to do that particular activity because when I do that particular activity, I am going to get A, B, C, D. So, why do people want to do business in the first place? There are many reasons why people want to do business. The reason why people want to do business is really, really fivefold or threefold. But I think what is a business? A business is very important for us to discuss. In our simple understanding, a business is any activity where there would be a transfer of certain resources and somebody else is willing to pay for that transfer of those resources. A transfer of a certain value where somebody is willing to actually pay for that value. At that point where somebody is willing to pay for that value, that transaction becomes a business. So for those of us that think that a business is typically in a building, a business is typically in a, a stall, a business is any transaction that attracts value and there is somebody willing to pay for that value. So you can actually have a business in your head and be able to transfer that value and then somebody is able to pay you. So we are talking about the essence, the essence of business. What is the purpose of business? In the traditional sense, the purpose for business for many of us is to make money. And then the question happens is that after you've made the money, then what happens? So in the logical sense, the purpose of the business sometimes goes beyond just making the money. <clears throat> I want to submit to this forum that the ideal purpose for a business should be to actually meet a need 
satisfy a requirement that society has, and then once that need is met, along the way you are able to make money and many other things that you want in life. You may realize that if a business is set up and the purpose is just in the short change of things just to make money, that business might not survive what we call a cross-generation period. In other words, it might just die with the owner. But wherever there is a purpose for that business that transcends just making money, in other words, that business is meeting a need, is scratching somebody's need somewhere, that business is, 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 is uh, poised or uh, um, uh, positioned to go beyond a certain period. So, in a nutshell, in that area, we should start business. Obviously, we are going to make money. But beyond money, there must be something greater that this business is going to be able to meet. And that must be a need. And some needs are not satisfiable. I need to mention this. Some needs are not satisfiable. Some needs are going to stay with us until we meet our creator. So that means if one has a business that finds and meets a need that is going to actually transcend and go beyond ourselves, then that means perpetually this person is going to be in business. Yeah. Let me talk about learning, for instance. I, I just want to give an example. Learning never ends. I have met people that have got actually the highest of the qualifications, PhDs. Sometimes I call it, I call it pull him down. In other words, the higher you go, the more you expose your bottom. Actually, the higher you go, what happens is that, is, is that the, the space becomes so narrow that you don't seem to know anything else other than that particular area where you've actually uh, 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 specialized. But you find that somebody with a PhD needs some lesson in how probably to fix an, an electric bulb, to fix a socket, to fix a small battery something, to remove a tire. To, so, learning never stops. So, wherever there is learning, there is going to be an opportunity perpetually. Another area I find, and I'm sorry for my spiritual leaders, for them to, for anybody to think that I'm looking. But if I were to look at Christianity as a business, and I need to, because now I'm seeing Christianity, or even our worship places, seem to be adopting business antiques. Now, I can see some of our worship places have the ability for me to actually get a scanned code. It gets onto my phone, then I'm able to pay my tithe. So they're using business. And so I'm thinking that if Christianity were to be a business, we are talking about 2,000 years. Are we talking about? We are talking about 2,000 years that make it happen for me, who is running that particular gospel, to be able to actually sell it in the way that I can be able to do so. I'm talking about the transition of business from one level. Therefore, what is business planning? Business planning is the whole activity <clears throat> that encompasses all your faculties to come together <clears throat> and think about this great idea that you have. You plan for it in its detail because the failure to plan is a planning to fail. Now, I have heard about family planning. I have heard about urban planning. I have heard about, you know, a plan for a house. Now, let me just boil it down for a plan for a house. In the house, you will have particular places, as the plan dictates, that this will be a sitting room, that will be a pantry, this will be a kitchen, and these are going to be bedrooms. I have, I have learned lately that even within our East African states, Uganda seems to be a bedroom. Kenya is a, a sitting room, and Tanzania seems to be. In other words, there is a plan. There must be a plan for that particular house. Every house that becomes, gets demolished faces a challenge because the urban authorities look at that house in the wrong place, all without the actual specifications. Would you be surprised, for instance, why buildings fall? Because maybe the plan was there, but the ingredients in the plan were not, were not specifically made as required. So even our businesses are going to fail 
certainly without a plan. I need to put a disclaimer here. There are some businesses that seemingly thrive without a plan, according to you. <laughs> but let me tell you, the owners of these businesses, other than having the business plan written, they have this plan clearly in their heads. I have interacted with a number of these uh, small and medium enterprise agencies or businesses that you'll find somewhere, and you'll find the owner able to tell you exactly what that business is supposed to do, and they have it into their head. It is good to have a plan in the head. But the danger is that when you pass on, when you go to meet your creator, when you, it comes to nearer than God, nearer, my, nearer to my God, then what happens to this plan? You die with it. And therefore, we want to start the planning process by not only having the idea in your head, but also having the ability to transfer this idea in a way that this idea can actually be emulated by the people that are going to actually get into the footsteps. So business planning is that process where you want to determine the different aspects of your business in what quantity, in what ratio, in what mix they're likely to be having. Let me look at somebody who wants to initially make maybe a cake. Somebody who wants to make a cake will determine what ingredients do I need to do a cake? When do I need to put this in before the other? When do I need to put in this particular mix of whatever any of these ingredients that they are going to be putting in? When is it that I'm going to put this particular mix, total mix now on fire? How long am I going to wait for this cake to actually uh, to, to, to be ready? At what intervals will I check at the progress of the, this cake? So it's in the plan. Now, I can imagine if there wasn't any plan, somebody will set the fire before they are able to make the dough ready. And maybe somebody would run to buy the cooking oil at the shop as the fire and the door is getting ready. And then they find the shopkeeper has closed. Mm -hmm. So what happens? And we need this cake to be delivered. There must be an actual plan of everything else. In schooling, there is even what we call lesson plans. There is no school worth of its name that can start and run and run. And most of your students, you know, you would know that there is a lesson plan. There's even a syllabus of how things are going to be transitioned from one A one end to the other. So wherever you are, some of us are asking you as our children, have you covered the syllabus? Because there must have been somebody who sat down to lay it to say that if you go and you want to be a candidate this year, there must have been certain quantities of lessons and formulas that you must have learned in order for you to be able to go and sit for that exam. So our business plan enables us to plan for this business for many eventualities. One of them is the ability of the owner of the business to actually die but also, the other reason would be that there could be people who are interested actually to look into your business to say, is this business worth funding? Many of us, and uh, through COVID, I've been talking to people, people are saying, we don't have money, we don't have money. But even before COVID, people were talking about, we need money, we need money. I, I, I think I also need money. But there is this question, I need money. So you ask somebody, what do you need to start your business? And somebody says, I just need money. Then you put money, bah! Then somebody says, uh -huh, now where do I get a, B, C, D. So now the brain starts to open. Now, that money that you've received without a plan, without a methodology of how you're going to do this business, really means that this money is attracting interest as a result of you not being ready to run. And you know what happens? Eventually, the man who wants his money back gets to you, and he wants the money before even you're able to make the profit. So do you wonder why many businesses, especially in this country, would close down? We are talking about businesses that start, and within a period of about one and a half years to two years, they are crumbling, they are closing, because the things which were supposed to be done first were not done, and the things which were done last, which were supposed to be done last, were done first. And then what happens? You find yourself in a state of quagmire. So planning is necessary. I have been telling people that. This notion of thinking that things will work out themselves by God's way and miracle does not happen. I am a believer in miracles, but not in this one. Here there are no miracles. There is nothing which will happen, money to come by miracle. I have tried it, and you can trust me, I am a believer. But let me tell you, 
It is the same thing in our families where we have a scenario whereby people say, and here, allow me to use local language, one of the locals. I know many, but let me use this one. They say, Abana tuzala vuzazi, bana bakatonda. In other words, we just give birth and God will take care of. Now, you can imagine a child is an expenditure item. From the moment you conceive this child, you must have first. Hello, children, wherever you are, don't conceive. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I want to show you that you are such an expenditure of your father, of your mother. It is a terrible experience. And I'm telling you, they think about you from the moment before even you are conceived. They have to have bought your mommy ice cream. Uh, they have, have taken her out. Now, in this COVID period, I don't know how it has been happening. But, uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is that there is an expenditure of some sort. Yes. So, finally, maybe if it's a scientific wedding like we have seen, finally we can be able to see people raising up a family. The moment you are born, the nappies, diapers, and everything else starts to set in. So, you become an expenditure item. Now, I'm thinking, if there was no plan for somebody to know that you are going to come into the world... It means you'll even come when they, they say, They have no name ready for you. Are we together? Because even a name can become an expensive thing. Because they can name you Kulazi Kulave. Am I talking about? Then you end up getting into a lot of problems into the world. So, even the name has to be planned. That's why we have names Isaiah, Jacob. We have great names that seem to be coming into. So, there must be a plan. I have seen families that actually, couples that have broken down just because of the name of a child. Think about it. Sometimes I ask my mother, why did you name this name? He says, I, I read a very good book, then I found this name, and then I shortened it, then I named you. So, but there must be a very good plan why we do. The importance of planning, we shall see it as we move on into our businesses, but characteristics of a successful business, some of them are, one, a business plan. Whether written or not written, we prefer written, but whether written or not written, when that plan is in, is in existence, that is the first characteristic of a business plan. Friends, the purpose for business has been very outlined, very clearly for you. What is that purpose for your business? Are you setting out this business because you want to be the richest man? It's a great goal. Are you setting out this business because... You want to own the entirety of this nation. And then, what happens? Are you setting out this business because you are fed up of being at home? Like in the case of many of our listeners tonight. Are you setting out this business because you are bored? Are you setting out this business because I have seen somebody who is setting up a business, they want to rebel from their parents because they've been asking them for money now 60 days asking money from daddy and mommy you are tired now and say can you day let me go and start my own thing is that good enough for you to be in business now what happens when those conditions go away the purpose must be must outlive all these small purposes that we have as we want to set our business now businesses that touch on people's needs and there are many needs people would have, that will dictate whether this business is going to go for long. One of these needs is feeding. Basic, basic needs. If you're doing a business in that area where there is a basic requirement, you are likely going to survive long in business. The only thing you might need later on in life is try to, trying to teach your business to be. Because a chapati will always be a chapati. Eventually, it can become like some of the brands I've seen, Obama Chapati, Gaddafi Chapati. So if you treat it that way, somebody says, I subscribe to Obama, I swear, but the dough is the same. Are we together? So you are likely to treat your business. I have seen some of these businesses, they say, we do boil. Uh, and I'm talking about the eating. We do boil, we don't, we don't fry, we don't do that, ABCD. But the purpose is to give people a healthy living. The purpose is not to make them get full that day but to keep and maintain them and keep them in a structure that is going to maintain a good health into their life. That could be a purpose. Now, but the greater purpose should be that you are starting this business and in the end that you're doing what you're trying to do, but you want this business to grow and grow and grow and grow 
and probably it become a multi-country, a multi-district, a multi-location of business. I want to paint a picture of one of um, our sponsors here, if uh, permission is allowed. I have been noting how Java's, Cafe Java's has been moving. And there is a need for me to eat food. But what kind of food do I need to eat? It must be food which is well cooked. It must be food which is brought in a timely manner. Because you can cook, very, you can cook food very well, like my mother. Cooks food very well. But when you are going to have to eat her food, it doesn't come in time. In other words, every time I go there, I, if I'm to go to my mother's place, I have to warn her I'm coming, and then I'll come a few minutes to the time, uh, and then I'll have taken into account the time it will take for her to cook such that I can be able to, I don't have to wait for long. So if I have a choice to go to my mother and Cafe Javas, I am likely to go to Cafe Javas because in the instant, I'll not only get good food, but I'll also get timely food. Then the other thing is also about quantities, quantities of that what we are. So our purpose for business must be one that goes beyond the ordinary and then it gets into a realm of life that when we do this, eventually it will bring all those great things that we need in life. Friends, I need to talk about the conditions that warrant a business to be done. I need to talk about the conditions that warrant a business to be done. In principle, a business must be done where there is a need. That's number one. Number two, a business must be done where there is capacity to meet the need. There is a situation where the need is, but there is no capacity to meet the need. Now, we make many mistakes when we have half capacity to meet the need, then we scratch people and don't scratch them properly. In other words, they are likely not to come back. So we need to do a business where there is a need, but there must be capacity to do. There must be also commitment, the commitment to meet this capacity. This linkage is very important. I would link it again when I talk about marriages, for instance. A marriage requires the two people to be in love. That is a, a requirement. But the greatest requirement will also be that when this love is in existence, the commitment exists. If there lacks to be any commitment in this equation, then we get into a lot of problems. So we are talking about um, the conditions um, that, that should warrant a business to be done. There must be a need. There must be capacity to meet that need. But there must be commitment then there must be also the technical know-how. The technical know-how comes from capacity. Capacity can be financial to run the business, but also the technical know-how. I'm not even talking about technical know-who. The technical know-who in an ideal business setting should never even be a question. Because when there is a need and there is a capacity to meet that need, there is a commitment to, be, to, to meet that need, and uh, then there is also the technical know-how, then that makes that business to be done. So that's very important uh, that somebody is able to do, to run out that business. A successful entrepreneur is key in that equation. In the earlier slide, I was talking about those conditions. Whoever has them must be an entrepreneur. Now, an entrepreneur must have what we call entrepreneurial eyes, eyes of an entrepreneur, require that you scan the environment, and when you scan that environment, that environment enables to reflect back to you where the need is. Half of us have not left our houses. We are into Bikomera. We are into the comfort of our bedrooms, the comfort of our sitting rooms. You've not even scouted around the area where you live what is needed in this area? You need to have entrepreneurial eyes. Then you have to have an entrepreneurial mindset. The eyes are able to show you where the missing links are, where the need might be. But the entrepreneurial mindset says, of the needs I have seen in this area, which of, which of these needs am I likely to go and attack? For instance... 
you might find that there is a lack of a takeaway service in that area. But also there might be a lack of a very good stable grocery shop, uh, grocery store somewhere. You might also find that there is a lack of a good washing bay. So of the three, which are within your capacity to do, which of those three are you likely to do? So you need an entrepreneurial mindset. An entrepreneurial mindset says, if I'm going to do a washing bay, what are the requirements of doing a washing bay? And you list them down. When you list them down, it means that then you know what does it require to have this? I need five million. Then you go to this grocery shop or vegetable shop and you look at it and say, what does it require? It requires me to do this, 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 and even possibly walk to Nakawa in this COVID. Are we together? To go to the marketplace. Then you list down that. Then you say, what about the other takeaway? It requires me to have a license. It requires me to have all this, and then you list. Now, the entrepreneur mindset says, I like, I would love to do a washing bay. But because I cannot be able to do the washing bay now, I cannot be able to do the washing bay now, I can start with a grocery shop. That is where the entrepreneur mindset is. The second thing is, you must be diligent. Diligent in doing the different things that you're likely to be doing, the planning, the observation, the writing down what are the requirements, the knowing. You must be diligent in everything you do, such that you don't leave any stone unturned. Then the third thing is that you must be credible. Credible means anybody who looks at you can take you for your face value. But even beyond that, there is even a value which is embedded. Somebody wanted to hire a vehicle from me, and um, I, as a young man, he came to me and he talked to me. I looked at him, I said, let's, let's meet. And as I talked to him, I asked him three questions, and in the third question, I was able to see he was not the kind of a caliber of a person I'm likely to give a vehicle worth so much, because he doesn't seem to be caring. I know he's a young man, he doesn't even have the capital to buy a vehicle, but the point is, does he look credible in what he says, in what he the way he's going to do it. So credibility is very important. If you don't have credibility, then you're not likely to access any funding from wherever. Friends, I need to go on quickly. Now, the determinants of the business that one should run. The business that one should run, one, should be from your passion. If you don't have passion in the business that you want to run, it becomes very difficult for you to even follow through. For instance, there are businesses you're likely to be doing, uh, they, you, 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 you'd like to do, but because your passion is not there, you're not driven to go and do that particular business. So in the business that you're likely to do, one has to have passion. But beyond passion, and that's where the biggest problem now in this country is, people have got a lot of passion, but nobody, and maybe very few of us, have gone to the next extent of putting some knowledge to the passion. I want to do ice cream business. I want to do popcorn business. What knowledge do I need to have in order for me to do this particular business? So we need to acquire that technical know-how. The other thing that we need is to determine whether this thing which we are going to do has a market. The need is there, but how substantial is the market? I know this is not rocket science, but actually when you go into the field and start marketing some of these things, it's a problem. A friend of mine has just been doing uh, face masks. There is a need, obviously. The entire country needs face masks. Now, she did 2,000 of them, bah. Then I said, uh -huh, now you've done. She says, now she asked me, how do I sell these things? Face masks, COVID is around, the need is there, they, they are good masks. Now she says, uh huh, cut it now. Okay, I've made now. I, so now I, I said, how did you even start to conceive to make the face mask if you didn't know that there is going to be? The market is there. But how do you get to the market? Do you go to the road and you start dangling them like this, like everybody does? You could do that. Do you work with people that have got shops or have got pharmacies that you can actually give some of these things to sell for you? Are you going to give it to them at a discounted price such that they can be able to sell at a small margin and then both of you can be in business? So that is very important. You need to determine how are you going to reach this market. And then, thirdly, 
You need to be able to know how consistent you are likely to be. Okay, you've made 2,000 masks. Now everybody else seems to be making the 2,000. So what happens? Even Nighty is going to make 2,000. So then what happens to your business? So suppose you took a loan from some of us and now you wanted to do this business. Then what happens when everybody floods the market with the same idea? This happens in produce businesses. It happens in all these copycat businesses that we see around. So we need to be. The, first, the fifth thing, you must be able to be original. Original doesn't mean that you're going to reinvent, you're not going to reinvent the wheel. But you are going to add a value to something that you need to be able to do. So you are going to reinvent the value. So it is very, very, very important, extremely important, that you and me are in a, a question of trying to add value. When you add value, you can pick something and add a small value across it. I have seen some creative works that are being done that somebody is able to start something and then they are able to add something on top of it and then it becomes something totally different. I know that even pizza is not just pizza. It is an, um, an, an addition of a number of things that people put together and they sell it at a very exorbitant price. Maybe an eighth of a chicken in that one. And then you pay for it so much money because of the value that seems to be added. Friends, I need to talk about one of the last things that somebody wants to talk, me to talk about. The determinants of the location where the business should be run. Friends, all of us, when we want to do business, we want to go where everybody is. I have seen this problem. When you are starting a business, it's a great idea like everybody has, and you go where all sellers are. You are likely to get problems. If I am to start a business, the notion should not never be to go where everybody is selling from. The notion should be to go where nobody is selling, but there is a demand. So you go to Chikubo, the Chikubo are going to force you out. They are going to even hike your rent. They are going, but actually, I have seen that many of the things that are sold in Chikubo are in Galiraya, Mukono. They are in Choga. They are in Nakapiripirit. So what happens? Somebody comes and picks these items from Chikubo and is able to move these items to a place where they need. So that means this cuts down a little bit on your costs of your location because in that location, as competition rises, then the demand for rental premises also goes high. So one of the expenditure items is going to be your rent in that business, and it cuts your business into half. I have seen people who do a lot of money, 100% profit, when they're actually offshore. When I say offshore, out of town. That's what I mean. Their business is there. They are not here where everybody's fishing. So your location of the business does not necessarily need to be where everybody has crowded. There are advantages of the crowding, true, but also the margins become less as you get into a crowded place. No wonder even banks are now talking about agency banking. They are spreading their wings everywhere such that they are not in only in this capital town, when every maybe 90% of our banks and our population is unbanked. So I'm talking about reaching out, getting out of the crowd, and setting your example. The other thing which is very important in that particular area is also knowing how different is what you're doing from the rest of the others. Why do I choose, for instance, your bananas? Yesterday I was on the road and I saw somebody hanging bananas in a very nice way. He has made a metal rail. They have this, uh, the, the banana uh, bunches have got uh, this, this, this whatever handle. And he has lined, it properly, lined them properly on that metal rail. He washes his bananas. Uh, I, I, I'm almost asking whether he's putting even some oil, but they looked very nice. Mm -hmm. And the man is in white shorts. You know, you know, you can imagine he's selling bananas, which are supposed to have sap, but in white shops, he's, he's like going to play golf with white sneakers. <laughs> and I stopped, and I said, I need to find out what's wrong with it. 
Then next to him, not very far away, another lady with the bananas on the ground. They are, you know, she's putting on a dress, which I can't even remember the color was, maybe brown or something. So how are you going to make that value be recognized from me, who is the passersby? How am I going to recognize that value? That's very important for you and me to know that location is not only now the place you are, but also location can be in the way that you arrange your business to be portrayed as a different. Today we are talking about social media. We are reaching you out on social media. Do we need to be in a room? Do we need to call you anywhere? Maybe not. And as the trend goes, that trend is going to be very important. Lastly, some of the operational factors that are going to determine your business plan are going to be one. And I'm going to say two, and then I'll end. One is that you must be planned. If you don't get planned, somebody else will kick you out of the business. You are going to plan what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, where you're going to do it from, with whom are you going to work with, how much is it going to cost you to have that kind of setup, where are you going to get the money, at what cost of the, of, uh, of, uh, of the resources are you going to, how much is the money going to cost you, how will your business be able to pay back as the man who has given you the money demands it, how are you going to get your suppliers? How are you going to make to meet your customers? All these plans, all this plan must be within. The other thing which is going to be very important is going to carry your personality into this business. When I go into Cafe Javas, I'm sorry to talk about this, but he's my sponsor on this program. I find Muse Mandela wiping tables. But this does not make him less of a millionaire. But I know some of us in our country or in our homes, as many of you might be looking at me, where you have taken breakfast, you've not wiped that table. You have not arranged that kitchen where you made breakfast from. It's a culture. So the personality of you will even go into your business. If you can't clean where you're seated, it means you can't clean where you are going to be working from. That's why in the culture of the most successful people, you find them pruning, you find them arranging things, like I've told you the question of Muse Mandela, is removing trays but it makes him actually get to feel a little bit of the feedback that he would probably not be able to get from many of his supervisors the other operational factor is that you must keep records if you don't have records for what you do every day the amount of money you've put in the amount of money you're getting out how shall we determine whether this business is making a profit I am told we have an analyst here, one of my fellow panelists. When you write your plan, the plan comes, and the man looks at, you say you're going to sell this, and then this is you're going to go, it's going to be your cost. He looks at you and says, he looks at the paper. Before he looks at you, he says, this doesn't make sense. Now, no matter how much makeup you are going to come with the bank in that day, how much, I don't know how the youth these days are putting on. You know, there is a style of hair yeah, I don't seem to understand. But it's like, okay, but... No matter how impressive you're likely to get into that banking hall, whoever is financing you will first look at your papers and your figures before they can even take in your personality. So your figures endear me to even start talking to you. The other way around, they say, ah, the lady speaks very well, the man speaks very well, but the figures don't add up. So your figures must be. Then, the other thing which I must end with, character. If your character is wanting, if your tomorrow is not tomorrow, if your, I mean, I know people will say, I love you, when they don't actually mean it. So, actually, you know when the emotions of love are shown also on the face. So, even when you say, I love you, the emotions follow. But now, I also know people who have emotions that depict love when the words actually mean the different intent. So, the, the, the business community, the people you're going to deal with will look for all this in you and God has given each one of us an intelligent way of, de of deciphering, of getting this thing from you. If your character is wanting, if your character is not straight, if your character is not, it can be told in the first five sentences you're likely to be speaking. Character, character. Lastly but not least, your presentation. <laughs> the way you present your things in your outlay. The way you have your shop 
attracts me. Remember the bananas, the banana man example I've just given you. I had to pack and say, how has this man packaged his style? How has he arranged? The most arranged shops give very good returns to people. Why? Because people like to go where there is arrangement. Arrangement is also synonymous with quality. Arrangement is also synonymous with originality. Arrangement, you know, I'm talking about tidiness, I'm talking about all those things that call. It calls for all those great things that really call people to be able to be, uh, um, to be attracted to your business. And the more people you have to walk into your business or even make the orders, you know, that arrangement, that presentation is very key. I'll go back still to Cafe Java's. I have seen the delivery service on those tukutukus. And you look at that container, by the time it gets to you, you know the food is still fresh, it's still hot. But then I've also seen some other service providers. Actually, on one of the roundabouts, I saw, I, I, as the border border man was riding, the, the thing fell off. The breads and the, the, the pizzas fell, and the man packed them. I didn't see him going back. Now I'm talking about character here. I, I, he would have ordinarily gone back, but he continued on the delivery. This you don't see in Javas. This is very organized. The man is neatly drowned and ABCD. So it's important for us to be able to have that character, but also to have that presentation, and then be able to have that. Business. I want to thank you for listening to me, and uh, to make it really a point, why you must do the business, it might only be the only way you are going to do to survive post-COVID because there must be another income that you must be able to put on table because half of us are going to be probably laid off. Some of your parents or guardians are going to be given half salaries. Some of them are going to be laid off. I've repeated it again. But again, many of us are going to actually lose a lot of interest in going to work where the cost of going to go to work is higher than the salary you receive. So the need for me to start a business, a side hustle, is very important. That is for me as it is for everybody in this room and all of us out there that are listening to us. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much, uh, Dennis. Uh, we shall take a breather. When we come back, we are getting your reactions to the presentation. And those of you here who are already asking about loans, our panelists have all that answered. Stay with us. to get signed up to online banking now that you've got your account let's get you hooked up on online banking visit www.standbigbank.co.ug and click online banking on the right top corner of the screen contact us on social media or call our toll-free customer care line to receive your unique username after receiving your username enter it in the account name slot enter the one-time password otp that was delivered via sms to your mobile phone Select three security questions and an answer you can remember. Now, you can begin your banking with no hassle. Yes, we are talking about business planning. And that is where most of uh, uh, the genesis of everything, that is the genesis of everything. If you want to access credit, that's where you start from. If you have a phenomenal business plan, whoever wants to, you know, put money in you will be uh, really encouraged by the business plan. Thank God for you at home. We have Mr. Chiremide Mujeni, who is the senior manager uh, credit here at Stanbic Bank. Um, Mr. Mujeni, what, what are those things, the mistakes we make as business people when we come to you to access credit? And you look through our paperwork and you're like, ah, boss. <laughs> Uh, I know at Stanbic it can be, but this one it cannot be. <laughs> this one it cannot be. What are some of those common mistakes we make? 
thank you, Brian, and uh, thank you to Rondo, who ably covered most of the things that I actually need to talk about. Mm. So, I don't know why you started with the things that can't be. <laughs> <laughs> it probably should have been the other way around. What are the things that we should do to, to, yes. to be better? But I'll stick to your question. Um, one of the things has actually already been uh, covered. When you come up with information does, that doesn't tally up. Um, so you say you want to um, start a petrol station. You have no idea how much profit you make on a liter. You don't have an approval for NEMA for your petrol station. Uh, Minister of Energy approval is not there. And you tell me you are going to start in two months. So <clears throat> things must uh, tie up. And then the, also the other thing is, is about having the, the team to do the work. Mm. And we can talk about a, a whole scale of businesses, right from big corporations that, that you see in this country to medium size, even to personal loans, to someone who is starting a small uh, chapati business. But in all cases, um, you must have a clear plan of how you are going to do things. And often, uh, sometimes, whereas people have uh, good plans in their head, uh, having it uh, on paper and being able to articulate that so that what the passion they feel, the plan they, they feel can also be uh, felt by the other stakeholders. There you find um, there's a, a bit of a problem and coordination, in coordination. The other thing I think is people think that you need to start a, a business and the next day you need to walk into the bank. It is probably not the best way of doing things. Because um, I know many of us may not be accountants, but there is a fundamental accounting equation. So if you are starting a business, a business has assets. And the assets are funded by the owner, but also you may get funding from, from elsewhere. But it is not, in my opinion, and good practice, that you are starting a business tomorrow, and the business requires a total capital outlay of five million, and you are walking into the bank to get four million. You are going to put a burden on the business with uh, financing cost before you even know uh, what it is that it can generate. Because remember, at the beginning, it is projections. You are going to start a school, and you are projecting you'll get 1,000 students. And you think you recharge them one million, and all of them will will pay, pay on time. On time. <laughs> so what happens if 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 the enrollment is 400 students, and half of them have not paid, and then there, there is COVID, and the school is the schools are are, are closed. Yeah. But if it is your own money, in the beginning, you have tested the business has started generating more money and you now want to expand, then you can come for debt. So we are in the business of giving debt, but we also uh, are responsible citizens. We don't want to give debt that takes uh, people down. There are a whole range of things, but those are some of the things. Yeah. Wow. Uh, there's even a question here. Uh, at what point uh, do you uh, repossess people's properties. Okay. Because I know the bank gives you as many opportunities, but at what point do you say, boss, Chigany? Okay. okay. I, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> because I'm assuming that most of the people who are alive on, 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 on the different uh, networks are 
as students, uh, probably, and selling of property is the right thing. On. <laughs> so I didn't know that it would be the second question. But this is it. Um, <clears throat> as a bank, and, and I will restrict myself to, to, to Stanbic, we, we lend in a, in a regulated framework. Um, we are regulated by, by Bank of Uganda and also the laws of Uganda. Uh, so when we, we give uh, loans and, and advances, it is primarily because of your business plan and the record that you have. We take collateral, yes, in some cases, in some cases not. But in cases where we have taken security or collateral, <clears throat> it is a secondary source of repayment. So if Brian has a boutique or a media business, he will tell us, he will prove to us that this business is profitable. I can run it, pay rent, pay water, pay my employees, and there will be some money left to pay the bank as well. And we'll do an assessment of that. But sometimes things don't work accordingly. And sometimes, actually, some of the customers, they would have presented to you a plan well knowing that it won't work anyway. <laughs> yes, those ones are also there. Yeah, yeah, they are there. So should it come to that point, we will... Uh, first and foremost, engage in a series of discussions that are meant to rehabilitating that account, rehab rehabilitating that business. So we may give you an extended period. We may give you a grace period when you are not paying. We may uh, allow you a number of um, options that are meant yeah that are meant to reduce on your cash obligation right. at that time right. but if all that doesn't work then we will uh, endeavor to put in some effort to recover the bank money and protect shareholders interests. Uh, interests so even when you begin that process there is a whole legal requirement um in our case, assuming that, that, that um, the collateral that we have is a property, you have a whole mortgage act which you follow. You give a notice, okay, 45 days. After that, you, you, before you advertise, you give another notice, 21 days. After that, you have to value the property. After that, You've got to advertise the property in papers that are widely saturated. Yes. After that, there is a bidding process. That's a long <laughs> So the whole process between the, when you begin and, and when you actually sell, it's about nine months or thereabout. Then you advertise, then there are no buyers. Then you re-advertise. <laughs> So, so, yeah, it takes a whole long process. But I didn't understand what was at the back of the mind of the person who asked the question. Whether it is from the perspective of do banks quickly grab uh, people's pro pro properties or I don't know what was yeah. at, 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 at the mind. Perception, and, and, and I hope that you have... Uh, gotten some clarification because yeah. we get to hear about these things when someone's property is being advertised. But we don't understand that before the property is advertised, there's a series of things that is done. Surely, by the time they start, ad by the end of the nine months, you can come and say, but really, you guys, uh, I, I have something. Let's talk about something. But then, Brian, it goes back again to planning. Planning. Mm. Planning. 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 Even if you're buying that house, have you planned for it? Yes. yes. Because some of us will, will because of pressure. Mm. Eh? Mm. I want to show them Tinange <laughs> Wendy. Eh? All right. But uh, also, I, I just want to add, mm -hmm. even at the point of uh, disposal, mm -hmm. you still have an opportunity to, work, to talk to us 
during that time when all that is going on, the door is always open for you to come and talk to the bank with any proposal that you may have. It must be a meaningful proposal. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Um, let me talk to Joseph. Joseph, you, you wrote a business plan uh, in the championship. You've now rolled out the Rolex business. And uh, now, t first tell us about the Rolex project. Uh, where is it? And what are you as an individual doing during this quarantine? Thank you so much, Brian. Um, he has introduced me as Joseph. Yes, I'm Joseph Odoi. And uh, I, I, I wrote a business plan. Maybe I can say it was more of an accident, <laughs> but uh, in one way or the other, it turned out to be meaningful to me as an individual. How did this plan come about? Um, we had great hopes in the competition, national schools. Uh, we were actually aiming to go to, to, to the finals. You can see how much we had actually planned. <laughs> so as this whole competition kept on going on, uh, some things had to reveal themselves that, you know what, you have great hopes, but... Uh, Maybe you were meant to stop somewhere. But I had already rolled out this plan in the first place. So when it came to that time, and I saw this plan, and I was like, now what am I going to do with all this? Because my hopes were in the, in the two million, the seed capital. <laughs> as much as starting uh, your business has to be more of like personal money and not borrowed money. Now, I, I, I found it hard, but then... We could say God was on my side, an opportunity availed, and MTN was willing to, to, to look into my idea. So I was called for a presentation where we, we came second, we were a group of three. We came second, and uh, we moved away with one million, less than the two million we had expected. <laughs> but thank God, the plan we had written was not really very elaborate. This was more of like... A Rolex business. So we were dealing within our means. And this time came, I had to sit down with my friends. We did a little brain work, and uh, by the time everything was set, it was time to come out to the market. But one thing I would like to stress very much is that all this wouldn't be possible if it, were, it weren't for the character that I as an individual possessed and uh, the friends at school also possessed. Because you, you imagine that this is an institution whereby they have one thing in their mind. You're here to study. You're here to study. What other thing are you here to tell us? You've come to do business. And uh, I felt like, okay, this would have come at a certain point, but it did not because of the character I possessed, the character my friends possessed. So it was easy for the school to buy the idea. And when I went to pitch out my idea to the students, it was something very, very, very easy. And, well... Money never came in the first day, but it came with time. What I can tell is that the first time I put this plan into practice, it was as easy as that same day I was able to sustain the business from just that little money I put in. So I, inv I invested uh, about 400000 awesome. I invested about 400000 and that was the la Of the $1 million, I invested 400000 We invested 400000 with my friends, and... Uh, of that 400,000, the next day we made about 300,000. Wow. And this money is what we used for the day-to-day -day running. Right. So you realize I never had to go back and ask for more money that I needed to do what? So if you to look at where I've come from, you realize that uh, most times we, we take businesses to be more of like things that you, you keep on adding money. You want it to be, yeah, keep on going day and night. But that is not where it has to end. Right. You start small and grow big. So the simple business idea I had was very simple. These gentlemen have talked of things that are very complex. But the, the business idea really goes to something very simple. You as an individual, what, just look at its normal life. What do you need to set up a business? You must have your own money. Don't go and ask for money. When you ask for money, you're going to burden your business. So when you start from your own personal money, it gives you the time to repair where you're wounded. But if you go and ask for money from elsewhere, this is more of like another wound being added to you in the long run. So I kept on, I kept on uh, with this business idea. 
my friends, the network was really wow. I, I have to give them bravo. And at times where I failed, I had to ask for consultation. Mm. Martin was there. Mr. Harun Yassin was there. I had to talk to this because Martin has Investors Club. Mr. Harun is running his retail shop. And these are people who have seen everything in the business world. Who am I to think that I have it all? So I had to go, humble myself, talk to them. And yeah, it felt nice. And where we are right now, when I left school, because I was uh, in senior six, I left school and people were really yearning for my idea. I never thought it would really go that far. Awesome. But by that time, I had about eight potential buyers. And if you had the figures they were looking at, I even had that at some point. At, business? They bought it at <laughs> a certain point. <laughs> at a certain point, I had a teacher coming to me asking me, uh, that thing of yours, <laughs> how, how, how are we doing it there? And uh, all I told him is that it is there for some time and uh, it is here to stay. So but I, I sold off the business because I had to leave school and my team had uh, advised me accordingly. They said that it would be best that if anything, maybe we need to go and start another enterprise outside. But for school, I think school is out. Let's right. sell out this business. Right. Maybe recover a few losses where possible. And that's how it went. Yeah. Wow. This is incredible stuff coming from um, these young people. And this is what we, you know, do every day. I'm, and I'm going to come to Barbara uh, in a few minutes because this is part of the, the, the process in the championship, you know, uh, business uh, planning uh, preparations. But I want to, uh, Dennis, there's a, a question here for you. Do all business plans have to work? Because some plans uh, take so long to come to uh, fruition, uh, do, is, is, is it a rule that all the plans have to work? Um, thank you, um, uh, Bran. A plan is a proposed roadmap mm -hmm. of what you want to do. But there are also, within plans, good plans and bad plans. So when you have a bad plan, it will not work. But if it's a good business plan, then it means it meets the basic requirements of that plan. And that means there is the key ingredients of that plan. If it's a table, the four, the four legs are standing firm, so that the, table, the table will stand firm. So some plans are plans true, but they don't have a third leg. And then that happens. Now, what makes the plan, you see, let me even answer you more clearly on this, that a plan is implemented by an individual, somebody who is promoting it. So a plan in writing, and it is in a document, and it is in somebody's drawer, can never work. I actually tell people that I have learned as an experience that there can never be a successful business unless if there is a successful promoter. Somebody who is successful, to, and I'm writing something about who is a successful promoter. This is somebody who dreams about something, somebody who is passionate about something, somebody who talks about this thing, somebody who puts it in, like our colleague, uh, the student uh, 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 of uh, the Sandvik National Championship, who said, I'm going to do this Rolex business and put it into plan. So if you had a great plan and you're sleeping on your bed and you're counting how many bricks uh, were built by this building and you're in your comfort zone, the plan can never work because the plan, first and foremost, does not speak. can only be read by somebody who has the same passion. So what makes plans to fail? Because they do, those plans, one, are not good. They are not sufficient in their content. But also they don't have a pursuer, somebody who is going to pursue that plan to fruition. Now, there are environments that are going to make the plans find hardships. But I consider a plan like a plane that sets off with a good pilot, with good fuel, and it could actually find turbulence airborne, and that could cause a crash. But ideally, all planes are what we use to travel, so we'll travel with another plan, right. with another plane tomorrow. Fantastic. Yes. Nicely answered. Mm -hmm. Before I, I wrap this up, I'm requesting for 10 minutes of your time. I, I, I want to um, uh, come actually to the, a quick question here. Uh, Mr. Mjeni should answer it in like two minutes. Uh, a question here for you. Can, if, if my 
plan is not good enough. Can the bank help me prepare a plan so I can get credits? Hmm. Interesting question. We can help. Can, can, I, can you help me write the, the plan that makes me get money? We can help you improve your plan. Uh -huh. Yes. So you have people who write plans in the bank? <coughs> no, because you see, um, it is not, it, I wouldn't advise anyone doing, unless it is like your consultant or whatever it is, to, to do it for you. Because where did it all begin? From passion, from the opportunity that you saw, from all that, from your dreams. So you are the custodian of that. I can only advise you that from my experience and some of the things that I have seen, maybe you need to make an amendment here. Yes. Maybe uh, you were over-optimistic in some, in some aspect. <laughs> or the timelines, given what we know, the timelines may not work. Adjust the timelines. So it's better to help someone improve their own plan than trying to do for them a, for, for them a plan. Yeah. Mm. So we, we do that a lot in terms of when, when plans are presented to us, we try to apply reality to the plans and where there are opportunities for improvement, we advise them accordingly. If they wish to change, then they change. Yeah. Very well. Mm. Barbara, um, business plans are part of the uh, processes uh, for the championship, uh, but also the, the beauty about this is that even if that business plan has not won the championship, you take it up. Just uh, briefly tell us about uh, some of the reasoning behind uh, the business plan uh, stage and some of the, the businesses that have come out of the business plans that were initially done in the championship. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, you know, when I listen to someone like Joseph, I, ke I keep getting those goosebumps because that means, like as I always say, that what we are doing is actually doing something for our young people. Why do we do the business planning? Um, why would you do a skilling program without taking somebody through the steps in order for them to become successful? So for me right now, what I can say is the whole rationale is by the time we have taken you through. So Mr. Lindo has spoken. Mm -hmm. So after he speaks, then what should we be doing? We put tools in place so that our students, our young entrepreneurs, our future leaders of tomorrow can be able to actually practice it and do it. And as you've heard from Joseph, he didn't stop in school. He's continuing it after school, as well as a lot of our students that have gone through it. Oh, they're not students. These are our young adults or our young minds, as they're called. So that's why we do what we do. But now, Brian, you've seen, we've spoken a lot about, you know, the passion. So you found the passion, you found the need, you found... But then how do you put all that on paper to make sense for yourself? for the community that you're going to serve in, and also maybe eventually as you've grown your net worth for the bank, just like Mr. Chiremirian was saying. So at the end of the day, without us handing out the proper tools during this skilling program for our, for our young minds and our future leaders to practice with, then there will be no point doing this program. And that's why we do what we do. Thanks, Brian. <sighs> Nicely put. A gentleman... Uh, I know him by his first name, Dwight, said, plans are nothing, but planning is everything. And that is, if you forget everything that we've talked about today, that's what you should take home. We want to leave it at that. The questions about business planning are already on the Stan Big Bank Facebook page. Please go there, answer them. The winners, the people to answer the first five questions, of course, correctly, will win uh, a gift, a food hamper, food voucher from Cafe Javas. To all our partners who have made this possible, we thank you. And to my panelists today, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> for all questions, credit, loan, whatever, Mr. Amjani is, is available, he'll be able to uh, sort you out. And from me, 
and the entire team here at Stanbic, thank you so much for joining us. And whatever you're going through, wherever you're stuck, please remember that finally it can be. Yeah. Bye-bye. How to get signed up to online banking. Now that you've got your account, let's get you hooked up on online banking. Visit www.standbickbank.co.ug and click online banking on the right top corner of the screen. Contact us on social media or call our toll-free customer care line to receive your unique username. After receiving your username, enter it in the account name slot. Enter the one-time password, OTP, that was delivered via SMS to your mobile phone. Select three security questions and an answer you can remember. Now, you can begin your banking with no hassle. The future of banking is here. You can now open your account online. No downloads, no apps needed, no paperwork. On any device, laptop, PC in office, phone at home, iPad on the move, on one page, anytime, anywhere. All you need are three simple things. A picture of valid national ID or passport for non-nationals. A selfie plus a picture of your signature on the device you're using. Now, let's get started. Scan the QR code on any of our adverts or visit the website www.standbake.co.ug and click on this button or this button. Click the key facts document and get to know our rates and charges for different accounts. Read terms and conditions. Click open an account. Complete the form with your details and attach a selfie or passport photo, signature photo, and national ID photo. Wait for scan to complete, then click submit. You will receive a reference number by email and SMS. If the account application is successful, we will send a confirmation email and an SMS. In the case that your submission has an issue, you will receive a call to advise you on the next steps. You can amend the same application and there's no need to start afresh. Now that you've opened an account online, simply present your national ID and reference number to collect your Visa card and enable cash withdrawals. Register on online banking and then on mobile, star 290 hash. View the next video on how. For more details, call our customer center on 0800-250-250 or visit our website www.standbickbank.co.ug or email us at cccug at Bank is regulated by the Bank of Uganda.